We're going to take the example spreadsheet that we worked on in a different episode to calculate the areas and expand it to look at some of the heat losses. So here you can see at the top part of the spreadsheet is the spreadsheet that we had before where we could take the uh, different sizes of the building. Remember the green were numbers that I had uh, put as inputs, take the length, the width, the height, use that to calculate the volume of the building, the area of the building, and then looking at um, the different walls, transposing down the length and the height to come up with area. Uh, we have some windows. Now one of the things about this example is there's really not that many windows in this building. Uh, this building does have um, one door in it. Um, and so you can see what those numbers look like. Very small percentage of windows. It actually would be much more common to have more windows. Let's just take these windows here and, and replicate them around the building. Uh, that might be a little bit more common. In fact, uh, these larger sides, maybe we should have a couple more windows on. So we get something that looks like that. And on the lower part of this spreadsheet down here, we're actually going to calculate some of the energy loads of the building. And so we take the area that we had calculated up above, uh, and I'm going to add the R value. So I've got an R value for the walls, and from that I can compute the U factor. Usually for windows, we have the U factor, so I can calculate the R value from that. And we've got a door with an R value of four. We've got some ceiling roof, and I'm still going to ignore the floor uh, for the time being. And from that, and using the heating degree days, we can use our approximate model that we developed in another episode to talk about what the uh, annual heat is. So in this case, through the walls, about 4.5, 4.6 million BTUs uh, leaves the house. And we can repeat the same for the windows, the doors, the ceiling. And again, we have to remember that this is really a spreadsheet to show the building science concepts, um, but you may not want to use this for an actual design. You'd want to use a more sophisticated tool that can better account for all of the parameters and, and weather data, because this is just using the heating degree days uh, as an example. We can also calculate, again, it's um, kind of a very simplistic model, but based on an outside design temperature, perhaps the coldest day is minus two degrees Fahrenheit and inside we're trying to keep it at 65. I can calculate what that design heat load is in BTUs per hour. And looking through all of these, um, I can then uh, also calculate the infiltration. So taking an air exchange rate of 0.2 air changes per hour, I had the volume from before and calculate again both the annual heat and the design heat loads. And from that, I can come up with a total number. So for a total number, we're at about just shy of, of 18 million BTUs per hour. Uh, from that, I can compute what the percentage is through each of those surfaces um, and the contribution to infiltration. I can do the same for the cooling load. And, and in this case, remember that humidity may really throw these numbers off and these are really just an approximation. And that to kind of approximate some of the humidity concerns, uh, we can pick an inside temperature that's a little cooler than you'd really keep it. Uh, the design, let's say, is 98 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I've got 1,200 degree days in this particular uh, climate model. And so I can calculate the annual num amount of cooling, just like I did for heating and the design cooling, and again, the percentage. And I end up with these totals down here, and I can take those totals and using what I know about the coefficient of performance, or I could put a system efficiency in here, I can then calculate, so this would be a heat pump system, how many BTUs per year my uh, building actually needs, um, you know, in terms of electrical input to run that heat pump, which then is providing the heat to the space, and the air conditioning has a COP, and again, using that to generate the uh, cooling load for the space. And right here's the cooling load, and then applying the COP, I can get the annual amount of electricity. In this case, it's in kilobtus per hour. You may want to convert that to kilowatt hours per year, uh, which would be a more common measurement for electricity. 
And then I can take that number and I can normalize it against the size of the building. That helps me compare buildings to buildings and compute how many thousands of BTUs per square foot or the energy use intensity we need for heating and we need for cooling. Now, looking at that distribution of where that energy is going, you can see in this house, it's really dominated by the windows and the walls and then next uh, I guess the ceiling roof is next, followed by uh, infiltration. And just as a note, this infiltration is pretty tight for um, especially a building of this size. And uh, we'll address some of the infiltration concerns in a, another episode. Now, the real catch is how do I reduce the number, right? And really the, the key number, let's just start by looking at the heating side, right? So our heat pump needs 4.5 million BTUs per year um, in order to provide that um, energy for the heat pump in order to provide the heat for the building. So if I can reduce this amount of heating, then I can reduce the amount of energy that I need for the space. So let's look at some of these numbers and see what we can do with them. Um, the first one, you know, we've got these windows. And so, you know, one of the questions is, do you actually need that many windows? because as you decrease the number of windows, it has a pretty substantial impact. We went from 4.5 down to 3.9. That, that was almost a 10% uh, reduction by getting rid of a couple of windows on the space, right? Perhaps the walls, that seems to be pretty significant here. Maybe instead of R20, maybe we can move to an R30 wall. Maybe the windows, we're gonna pick a better glazing and maybe go to a U-factor. Uh, we'll be pretty aggressive here with a fancy window and go to point um, two for that U factor. Um, I see here we actually have a calculation error. Uh, let me just fix that while we're doing this. Um, and so that becomes now R5 for the windows. Um, so we've corrected that. Um, and maybe the ceiling and roof instead of R30, that, that's still a pretty big load and it's pretty easy to add more insulation to ceilings and roofs. Uh, there's a lot of space in the attic, so let's move that to R60. You notice that dropped that down by a factor of two, going from R30 to R60. And now my building is down to 2.6 million BTUs. Uh, so we're, we're getting close to half of where we uh, started with this discussion. Um, and really looking at this, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do too much more with um, the R value of the walls. If I really go to a, a thickened wall, maybe I could get to R50, but now I've got to deal with special wall considerations. Um, windows are going to be tough unless I, I can't really reduce the U factor too much more. But what I could do is continue to reduce the number of windows. Uh, maybe on these smaller sides, I'm only going to put in one window. Um, and, um, you know, that will also have an impact. And so you can use a tool like this to pretty quickly get an idea of what's going on. Now, what I've done is I've taken it down to the point where infiltration is now one of my largest loads. And, you know, one of the things that we can, you know, think about is, instead of using air changes per hour, we actually put in a force air-to-air -air heat exchanger. And so instead of needing to provide 100% of that heat, maybe my heat recovery is 75%. And so um, in reality, I only need to provide 25% of the heat because I can recover 75% of it. That's actually gonna have a huge impact um, on this. And so as we're designing our buildings, Infiltration actually has a pretty substantial impact and being able to control that infiltration, perhaps using an air-to-air -air heat exchanger can have a pretty big impact. And so I went from 4.5 down to 1.7. And so by doing all those things, I actually got about a 50% reduction uh, in my building. Now you can see what happens, you know, this is a pretty small house and pretty quickly as you, you know, make the house bigger, Right, that will also start increasing the load um, that we have, um, kind of proportionally across the board. Um, but 
you know, the size of the house and the areas that are represented also have a pretty big impact. So that just gives you an idea of what some of the impacts are and how we can use our knowledge on the building science to, you know, look at different values and different design parameters, because really it comes down to how we design the buildings in terms of how much energy they're going to use. Now we could talk about getting a more efficient heat pump, you know, which, which certainly would help us. Maybe we go from a, uh, a COP to a COP of closer to five, and that will reduce our annual heating load. It doesn't change the amount of heat that we actually need, but it does provide it in a little bit more efficient way. But fundamentally, it comes down to the heat that I lose through the envelope, I have to make up some way. And the same on the cooling, right? So not only did I get savings on the heating side by making all those changes, but I also get savings uh, throughout the cooling side at the same time. And so those envelope decisions become very important uh, to designing these highly efficient buildings and houses.